Hey guys, welcome back to my movie reviews. My name is Cortland, and we are here to discuss Ready Player One. Okay, so Ready Player One came out last week at the time of this recording. Okay, so really quick, this movie is yet another movie based off a book that was released actually quite recently. I didn't realize it was released back in 2011. That's pretty recent. I mean, right now it's it seven years ago, but still pretty recent. Anyways, so you're thinking that the book is probably better than the movie. Well, you're probably right. I personally haven't read the book, so I wouldn't truly know. But based on what I've seen, yeah, the book's probably better. I have a roommate who's actually read the book, and he described in detail after we went and saw the movie what the differences were and how the book story went, and I'm just like, oh, okay. So the story in there is a lot better than the movie. All right, but anyways, also fun fact, speaking of the book, apparently the author, Ernest Klein is actually writing a sequel as we speak. I looked up information about the book like after I saw the movie, and apparently back in 2017, like November or so, the author stated that he was currently working on a sequel. So I'm like, okay, that's a cool little tidbit. So in terms of sequels, there's probably going to be a sequel to this movie down the road. But anyways, to the review! This is like the worst video game movie ever. No, I'm kidding. This is not that review. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the story is about this, like it's set in the future, like 2044 or something like that. And it's about this kid named Wade Watts, who is living in poverty, essentially, along with hundreds upon hundreds of other people, who knows how many, in Columbus, Ohio. And basically, their world is trashed. It's kind of like Wally, -E, in a sense, that, that story, but on a smaller scale. But yeah, they, this guy a few decades back created this virtual reality game called the Oasis. And so during 2044, that's what everybody's doing. Everybody's escaping their trashy reality to go to this virtual world where you can do anything and everything, which again, it's kind of like Wally -E, actually. Now that I think about it, it's exactly like Wally, -E, but with a video game instead of the technology. <laughs> that's funny. Any hoofs. Yeah, that's the story. What did I think of it? Um, I thought it was okay. It was a very, very enjoyable movie. It's a great movie to watch in the theater for sure. I have to say that. But it's not something I'd go out of my way to see again and again. It's something you should at least see once, though. Um, it's directed by Steven Spielberg, which I haven't mentioned yet. So it was placed under a little bit of pressure because of the fact that Steven Spielberg pretty much has made some of the most iconic and the most amazing movies of all time during his career so far, such as Jurassic Park and uh, Indiana Jones. At least the first three are good. And we don't speak about the fourth one. But anyways, story-wise, it kind of fell flat for me. It just didn't... Nothing... None of the plot points or story beats really got my attention too much. It just felt really generic. Um, the villain was extremely weak, in my opinion, and choices he made towards the end of the movie were extremely stupid and just had no explanation to his actions whatsoever because his character was not developed at all in this movie. He, he was... The, I would say he's worse than most of the Marvel villains that they've had in their movies so far. Like... It, the bad Marvel villains, anyway. Yeah, he, he's worse than that. <laughs> the, the villain was very generic and wasn't interesting whatsoever. The actor himself, Ben Mendelsohn, I like him, but he didn't do that role justice. He, he, he brought nothing to that. Not even his acting skills could save that character. <laughs> but then again, I haven't really seen him in any other movie besides Rogue One. That was his, the first movie I saw him in. So I can't really compare anything. That's just my opinion. Um, I thought the main lead actor and actress were pretty good. It didn't save the movie, though. <laughs> um, 
I thought the 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 side characters were pretty interesting. I thought as well, but in the end, they weren't really fleshed out too well either. The music, moving on to the the soundtrack and whatnot, there wasn't really anything there for me either. Like the soundtrack was pretty stale, in all honesty. The uh, the CGI, well, it's your uh, typical CGI. It did mesh well, I thought, with the real world parts. That I thought was pretty well done and executed. There's a lot of times where movies don't execute the CGI very well. I, I thought it was pretty good here. It, it was pretty believable, especially... Well, I guess it's because of the virtual reality aspect of the movie. Maybe maybe that's why it was more believable, but that's just my my opinion. Uh the there also the romance part, the little romance plot in there with the two main characters was pretty stupid, I thought. I wanted to believe that there was chemistry between them, but there wasn't in the end in terms of romance. I'm a big romantic type person. Like I, I enjoy those stories, but it just this one didn't do it for me. And there's one more thing I need to talk about: the nostalgia aspect of this movie. That's the big thing about this movie that everyone's talking about. The nostalgia was there, but at the same time, it wasn't. I really don't think they executed the nostalgia well. I really don't. I thought everything was pretty forced. In all honesty, there were a few things I did appreciate, though. Like, there was one nostalgic Easter egg in there, that one dude's avatar, which actually I think it was the um, boyfriend of Wade's aunt. I think he actually had that avatar, based on what I remember from the opening scene. Um, he had a StarCraft avatar, and it was the James Rayner in this Terran suit and whatnot, just shooting up a bunch of people. And they had a little StarCraft sound mixed into the background as well during that moment. I th appreciated that reference. But overall, it's, yeah, the, nostalgia, the nostalgia was there, but the way they executed it came off really horrible. So yeah, I'm trying to think if I missed anything else here. Oh, hmm. well, there was one scene where I'm, I almost lost it. I'm just like, what did I sign up for? And it was the second challenge where they had to go through the movie Shining. The Shining. I'm sorry. There's a the in front of it. Yeah, where they had to go through the Shining. And I'm just like, ah, shoot. Because <laughs> I'm not a horror person whatsoever. And Stephen King's stuff in particular, I'm not a big fan of. So... <laughs> That scene was a bit hard for me to watch. I'm just like, uh, mm. yeah, that was painful to get through. Not a horror guy whatsoever. N no, no horror. <laughs> just, just no. All right, so those are my thoughts on Ready Player One. What did you guys think? Leave a comment down below if you've seen it or not, or if you haven't seen it and are going to check it out. Let me know really quick. My score for this movie, I'd have to go with a 5.5 out of 10. Yeah. Some people are probably going to hate me for that, but I don't care. This is my review, so all of you can shut it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this review by me, and please check out my other film reviews if you haven't already. Make sure to subscribe to this channel as well to keep up to date on more movie reviews by me, and um, make sure to also check out other content on this channel because we have a group channel. So we have multiple people doing different things. So check them out as well. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have an awesome day. Stay awesome. Yeah.